says my chains are gone. I've been set free. My God, my savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, his mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace.
can set free my god my savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy Amen, amen. I would like to thank uh, Brother Brandon Hurst, a good friend of mine, more, more like my little brother than a friend, um, for that selection. At this time, we are going to turn this into a time of prayer. I'm going to ask Sister Paula Adams to pray for us, um, but before we do so, I want to take any prayer requests that anyone uh, may have at this time uh, before I mention the prayer requests that were given in the chat. So does anyone have any prayer requests? Yes, please pray for Mr. Harlem Nelson. Mr. Harlem Nelson, and also for Brandy Logan. Brandy Logan, they're both dealing with physical challenges. Brandy specifically had major surgery uh, two days ago. And we are praying that Yahweh will give her total restoration. Okay, Harlem Nelson and Brandy Logan. Anyone else? Okay, if we don't have any prayer requests, we had one from the chat for Brother Jonathan, who happens to just have joined us on Zoom. He has a prayer request for his sick mom his sick grandmother and all the sick. So in total, our prayer requests are Jonathan, uh, his sick mother, grandmother, and all the sick. Pastor Wegar is asking for prayer for Harlem Nelson and Brandy Logan. And we just had another one come in the chat from Sister Phoebe Harmon. She is asking prayer for her friend, Ellen. And another one from JCLA. She is seeing her doctor tomorrow regarding surgery, praying that God will direct the path in his way. In the name of Jesus, let's bow our heads and let's think about these names that have been presented tonight. Put them on your heart as we begin to pray. Let's bow our heads. Unending love, amazing grace. God, extend your grace upon us tonight as we give you glory, honor, and praise. We magnify you. We worship you, God. So there's nobody else for us to turn to when we bring you these names tonight. I will read them aloud, but God, you know your children and what they suffer and struggle with personally, privately, and openly. So tonight we present to you Harlem Nelson, Brandy Logan. We present to you Jonathan's mother, grandmother, and the sick. We present Ellen, and we present my beautiful friend, JCL. Lord, we also present to you our Hispanic ministry and Sister Yasmin Barone's father-in-law, who had a blood clot and then got sent home from the hospital. Thank you, God. Uh, and I pray that uh, nothing comes back and nothing reoccurs. And so God, I lay my hand on top of these names. Not that my hand has any power in it at all, but the power of God that lives within me believes that you will put your hand on them personally. That you will dispatch an angel. It doesn't matter which one, they all can do it to go and fit the need that's necessary. If it's healing, if it's physical challenges, if it's wisdom from the doctor's office, if it's a struggle, God, if it's um, um, just being sick, no matter what the problem, God, you have a promise for it. Amen. And so God, keep us patient while you fulfill the promise at hand. Thank you, God, for just the ability to work with a church that prays for others to be in a church body that lifts up the brokenhearted, that lifts up the uh, disenfranchised, that cares for the community. Lord, I know we said just these names, but what about the upcoming events uh, that are happening here at the church? The, the community baby shower. God, we need donations. 
God, we want to serve our community with love. God, we pray uh, for volunteers. God, we have an upcoming meeting this Sunday for those who will lead out in small groups. God, please supply. Don't let that be a, a failed uh, meeting. But let's show up so that we can minister to this community in these last days. Thank you, God, for already hearing and answering these prayers by the power of the Holy Spirit and in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Paula, for um, being willing to pray, even though I didn't give you much of a choice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for uh, being willing to uh, pray for us. Tonight, we are going to engage in a, a Bible study for the next half hour or so. Um, and as I said, it's a Bible study, which means we are going to be discussing. So I need your full participation, full engagement. I am not preaching. Again, I am saying I am not preaching. So I need everybody to engage. I want us all to dig into this word and to reflect and to bring to the table of God is depositing into your spirit so that we can all gain and all ultimately grow uh, from this. And uh, I picked a, a particular passage because in light of what our theme is for this year as a church is going out in twos in 2022. And so we are very focused on mission, right? Um, and generally the church is focused on mission, of course, but specifically our church here and what we're trying to do this year, we're really trying to put flesh to what it means to be on mission for God. And so I thought about a passage, when you, when you read it, you don't necessarily think mission, but as we delve into the study, I hope that you realize why um, God put this scripture on my heart for us to delve into and to discuss and to engage. So I am reading Matthew chapter three, verses 16 through chapter four, verses two. Uh, Matthew chapter three, uh, verses 16, uh, and then through verse chapter four, verse two, reading from the good old King James Version. It says, and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Chapter four, verse one. Then was Jesus led up, led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Last verse, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered or afterward hungry. The phrase I want us to focus on is, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, in a lot of what, like I said, we are trying to um, really be proactive and be intentional about mission. And um, I thought a lot about what that actually means for us as a, ch as a church and our um, intensity and our desire to bring people into Berean and to really impact our community on Fairfield Avenue and the Baton Rouge area as a whole. But this passage, what it, it brought to mind for me, and I want to see what you got, your thoughts are, is what really provides the foundation for mission. When you read this passage, Jesus has just been baptized by John the Baptist, and then the Holy Spirit and God the Father affirm him from heaven and say, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So we see before Jesus does anything, before he accomplishes any ministry related endeavors, before he does anything that merits any type of commendation, God tells him, you are my beloved son and I am well pleased in you. When we hear people compliment somebody, we say we're proud of you or you did such a great job, it usually comes after you've done something noble or something that's worth that level of um, adulation. But God gives this to Jesus before he does anything. This is, we just are now seeing Jesus on the scene after his birth. And then 33 years later, he's back on the scene and God says, this is my beloved son. And what that showed me was that affirmation comes before mission. Our mission will be short-lived. It won't have much staying power. We won't have much 
en endurance or much encouragement in our mission with all the obstacles that come with trying to be in on mission as, as individuals, as a church, if we're, we don't know what we're grounded in. And we see that also when we're, we fast forward to Mark 3, where Jesus appoints the 12 disciples and sends them. In Mark 3, uh, verse, I believe it's verse 13, his, he says he summoned the disciples to be with him and then sends them, them out to preach. So we see that same template kind of reinforced first to be with him and then to be sent out to preach. So my first question or my first kind of point of discussion that I want to see where you, you guys' head is, is what, when you think of mission, when you think of uh, doing things for God, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Whether that be end goal, whether that be the source of why you're doing things for God, or what is the first thing, especially in the time that we're living in, what is the first thing that comes to mind? Well, first I would just like to say, I love what you pointed out about affirmation comes before mission um, or being affirmed comes before being able to do the do the job that God has called you to do. And so I guess for me personally, um, and I'm trying to get my thoughts together, please forgive. Um, I love that God would, he, he does, he, he, he helps me, he helps me get out of my insecurities so that I can do what he has me to do. And he does affirm me. He lets me know that I'm a valuable child and, and he will use me as his microphone. And he's glad that I'm a vessel for him. And I think sometimes um, I can get caught up in what I've done wrong that I don't think I can do right. Mm, hello. So um, that's kind of what's coming to my mind. And you're right. I've never saw this as a um, missionary or text, amen, Jesus. But um, uh, that's just what kind of popped in my head and I just wanted to share. Thank y'all. Other question? Yeah, I know. I know. Um, with me, you think about missions. Sometimes, at at some point, we've all been there when we got a challenge that faces us, and the question might come to to mind is, "Am I equipped? Uh, am I qualified? Do I have what it takes to do the mission?" So I guess one of the things that might come into play is uh, is doubt. And sometimes we have to get past that. We entertain doubt, but well, then that's kind of like the first obstacle. You know, I mean, that's just, that's, just, that's just a natural thing, you know, to me. So I guess if that does come, uh, I have to have something to buffer against that. And one thing that can buffer against that, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, so so that's 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 like a that's like a limb or a pillar that I can grab onto when doubt does come. Yeah, I love that you said that. Um, I think that kind of coincides with what Paul, Miss uh, Sister Paula, said about my past, because doubts come in different forms. It could be doubts about your own abilities. It could be doubt ab doubts about um, what is realistic, especially you know. Um, I'm sure as a church, we've gone through that seeing we're a small church and seeing feeling like we don't have the resources as a church financially or otherwise to do what we need to do. And we start saying, man, what's the point of trying to have all these um, grandiose ideas about what we want to do as for our community or for uh, our church or, or anything at large where we're such a small church or we don't have enough resources or it can come from, like Sister Paul said, and I relate to that one, your past feeling like, what do I have to offer to people um, if I, they find out, you know, oh, this great person I've been talking to, and then later on somebody's like, oh, do you know what she did? And they're like, oh, this whole time you, you know, th this person that's been ministering to me or preaching to me um, has been, has done this in their past. And I know that's something I've been boggled down with. Um, and it's, I still kind of come in and out of. So I definitely um, agree with what you both said. Um, anybody else? Well, let me give my little take that um, the the edification of Yeshua, Jesus, during the baptism of Yahweh, 
is also um, a, a promotion of unity. Uh, he wasn't just edifying him, he was identifying with him, the oneness. Uh, the Holy Spirit is there. Yahweh, God the Father is there. Yeshua, God the Word is there. Uh, and so mission cannot be possible without oneness a purpose, without unity. Uh, Yeshua had been chosen to be the one to come in that season to do that particular work. And the Holy Ghost and Yahweh the Father were confirming their unity and their oneness with him. He was not here alone. And so we have to understand that when we are going out on the mission field, we're not going alone. That's why in uh, Luke chapter 10, uh, Yeshua, of course, sends them out two by two. And we see this unity thing throughout uh, uh, scripture where uh, when the Tower of Babel was being built and Yahweh saw what man was doing in their unity, the power of the unity of man. Uh, we see in Genesis 9, he said, come let us go and confound their language. He said to the disciples, stay in the upper room until the Holy Ghost comes, stay together. This is this togetherness, togetherness. Psalms 133, behold how good and how uh, perfect or what, how good and, and, and what a blessing it is for brethren, and I'm paraphrasing that text, to dwell together in unity. And, and so that's what we see there, that the oneness of Yahweh, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. You know, I was, I was at a church and I heard a preacher preach and the preacher was dismissing Matthew 28, 18 through 20, where Jesus uh, gives us instruction to baptize uh, in the name of the Father and the Son and, and actually made a dare. See, if you can find any scripture where people were baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, I'll give you a certain amount of money. And uh, But what that preacher failed to realize is when we are sent on a mission, we're not just sent on the mission by Yeshua, the Lord. We are sent on the mission by the Godhead, Yahweh, God the Father, Yeshua, God the Word, and God the Holy Spirit. So that's that's what I see in there. Thank you, Pastor. I'm glad you brought that up because I was actually later in my notes about how um, part of uh, the affirmation and the part of being with God before being with Jesus before we get set on a mission is understanding what our purpose is, understanding what it looks like to look like Jesus. Because ultimately, right, what Romans reminds us is that our 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 a lot in life is to be conformed to the image of Christ. But I don't, I can't preach about being conformed to the image of Christ if I myself don't even know what that looks like to be conformed to the image of Christ. And so when we see this passage, when we see the Holy Spirit as a dove and God the Father and the Son and seeing that how they work together so cohesively and selflessly in this moment, that is one of the markers of our uh, purpose is like Pastor said, unity. It's learning to work together. It's learning that it's not, like he's, that part, I didn't notice. I didn't even think about not being alone in mission. Um, and, and and like you said, you know, we get sent. They, they get they got sent two by two, which is what our theme is for this year. It's not about you sitting at the desk and figuring out how God is going to use you to change Berean or change Fairfield Avenue or change Baton Rouge. It's about how God is going to use us collectively and how you participate and collaborate and contribute to what God is doing. Um, in uh, uh, Baton Rouge. And um, in terms of the affirmation portion, I remember I was watching a video um, that it was an interview that Kobe Bryant was doing, the late Kobe Bryant was doing with somebody. And he said when he was a kid, 
um, there was one game where he he played hard, he played hard, but he scored zero points, and he was just disappointed, beating himself up. And his dad was something was just affirming him after the game, and he said, "Man, you know, I, I didn't score any points." And his dad was like, "Well, no, I'm just proud of you because you played, you played hard, you did what you had to do." And he was like, because he knew that he had he had no pressure to perform in other for his dad to love him. He had no pressure to have to score sixty and eighty and, and outshine everybody on the court that is what gave him the freedom to be how good he was because he knew that no matter how badly or how well he performed he did not have to wonder what kind of love or lack of he was going to come home to and i thought that was a powerful kind of um representation of what god is and what he represents before we tend we think about mission because if we are not secure in our identity, secure in our intimacy with God, secure in our relationship with God, our mission now becomes about performance because now you're doing stuff because you're like, oh, I hope God's going to love me if I bring such and such soul to Christ. If I baptize this many people, if I my ministry takes off in this way, then that means God really loves me. And so now mission is no longer about uh, building the kingdom. It's about your sense of worth and, and you trying to find your place in God's love because you did not take time to sit with him and be with him and learn what it actually means to be conformed to the image um, of Christ. I don't know if anybody else had any thoughts. I didn't want to keep going. And you know, uh, um, what you just shared, Elder, uh, there's a text in scripture, uh, John chapter 15, verse 16. Jesus is confirming, affirming, edifying his disciples, and he's taking away their pressure from them, like you said. He said, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I send you out to bear fruit, and that your fruit may remain. I mean, what a powerful, when Yeshua, who knows everything about you and me, can say, I chose you. Knowing who you are, knowing your flaws, your frailties, your weaknesses, I still chose you. So that means you don't have to even perform for me to choose you. You didn't have to bring a resume. You didn't have to do anything that pre-qualified you. I just chose you. And that's one of the the encouragement that I get in ministry, even when I am weak, when I don't measure up according to my own standard, and you know how we put pressure on ourselves. Mm -hmm. I hear him saying, we are, I chose you. You didn't choose me. I choose you knowing that you were going to mess up like you did. I still chose you. That's powerful. And that's what Kobe Brown, like you said, his dad is saying, baby, don't worry about it. No pressure in you. You're my son. You go out there and play ball, you know. <laughs> Amen. Right, right. And there's a passage also in Galatians, I think it's chapter four, that says, but now that you've known God, and it's like Paul pauses, like, no, wait, rather you've been known by God. It's, it's not, you know, the premise of it is not that you've known God, it's he knows you because that's really the foundation because you're going to have moments where you knowing God is going to be frail. You're going to have moments where you kind of discard and, and deviate from the path. But the foundation is the fact that he knows you. That's what keeps the relationship um, going. Um, anyone else? Another point I wanted to bring out was in terms of the affirmation before mission is the fact that the next scene that comes is Jesus being sent into the wilderness. And so I think that's, that's an important aspect to remember um, because after this affirmation, it's not this, this big um, grandiose celebration about, oh man, this is who Jesus is. He's the son of God. Oh, did you see what happened? Now let's, let's go celebrate or let's go do this. It's immediately he is tempted by the devil and sent by the spirit to be tempted by the devil. So it's like God understood and knew that he needs, he needs to know who he is in me. He needs to know that he, I affirm him as my son. I affirm, it, affirm him as the person, for lack of a better term, that I have sent to do this work 
because what's going to be come ahead is going to be tough. What's going to be lie ahead for him is not going to be celebration. You're going to have moments where people celebrate you and then there's going to be moments where people criticize you. There's going to be moments where uh, um, you um, put on this program or put on this event and it's going to do well. We're going to come back and give our testimonial our part saying, oh man, we're so grateful for what happened on Sabbath. This person showed up and that person showed up and this happened and that happened. And there's going to be other times we're going to meeting on board meeting and be like, man, that, that didn't go well. Uh, maybe we should try. They're going to be, it's going to be up and down, but what's going to keep us going is that initial confirmation, affirmation, that constant being in the presence of God, that constant intimacy with God, that's going to allow you to remember that it's not about the tangible numbers. It's not about the up and down, who showed up, who did not show up, and how many resources do we have? How much money do we have? Yes, we, we're going to have, you know, challenges, but I know that God is the one who put us here. God put Berean here before any of us were here. We, Berean did not start with us here in 2022. Berean was here before uh, we all got here. And so God is sustaining and that's what keeps us going. So it's not thinking about the good times and all the great dreams that we have, not that we're going to let them go, but remembering that there is a higher power who is in charge of all of this ultimately. He's the one who provides the fuel. He's the one who provides uh, the stamina. He's the one who allows us to come up with ideas and, and come up with different events and, and, and allows us to minister. He just, we're mere vessels who he allows to minister to these people, but he has them in mind before we have them. Like we don't care about 4555 Fairfield Avenue more than God cares about 4555 um, uh, Fairfield Avenue. Um, anyone? I would like to chime in. I really appreciate what you said, Elder, there, especially with events, programs um, that go really, really well. And then the next time it doesn't, it's not as successful. Um, but my testimony of his goodness and what he's already done, it, it, it grounds me, it, censor, it, it, it centers me. So my car accident a couple of years ago where my car spin out of control on the interstate right as you get off the um, Mississippi Bridge, that will always be my testimony. Nobody can take it away. I've seen him, I see him turn around a situation on, for my good. My father passing away and dying on his knees praying to God. Nobody can take that testimony away from me. And so when I go out mission, I know why I serve him. I have mine, what's yours? And so it gives me that fuel because he's been with me to stay with him. I know what he can do. I know what he has done. I, I, I like that point. I just wanted to say that. Other person? Yeah, I was just thinking, even, even in uh, mission, when you, when you read further down in four, chapter four, we see that uh, even in the process, we're going to face obstacles head on. Now, what do you do with the obstacles? Because stuff happens, stuff come at you. And we see like the enemy calls himself giving, 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 giving Jesus an option to kind of interrupt his mission. And not only did he do it once, but he, but he did it twice. Like, like, like he's giving Jesus something that uh, his father couldn't give him, you know? So, so, so we see, so how did Jesus respond to those obstacles first of all he told us satan uh uh it is written it's 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 documented thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god so here it is jesus is identifying with his father if you tempted me it's like you tempting god so he didn't bite that and then he tried he tried to do it again and jesus said to him get D behind me. I'm not entertaining you anymore. So when the obstacles come, uh, you, you you got you got to have a you got to have a, a different conversation with yourself. You gotta you gotta talk to those obstacles. Get behind me. Obstacle, move out the way. You know, sometimes you might have to just verbalize that so it won't be a hindrance uh, because stuff will happen even when you're trying to do God's work. <laughs> Absolutely, and I love that you said. Satan was trying to tempt him with something that as if the father couldn't give him those things. And that is the key that goes back to our first point, that if I'm not rooted in God before I go out to mission and go out and do all these things, 
then I am going to give in to what the enemy, because I'm I, in my head, I don't have it. I'm seeking this affirmation. I'm seeking this sense of worth. I'm seeking this sense of validation through these good godly things. And so the minute the devil offers me those godly things in an ungodly way, I'm going to fall for it because I'm looking for that affirmation. But Jesus, because he already knew who he was in God, he knew what his, his purpose was. He knew why he had came. He knew uh, that God loved him, that God had affirmed him and God was with him those temptations that were null and void because he's telling say i already have all these things that you're you're presenting i mean i have it now in this moment tangibly but i have it because i me and my me and god we good like i i we, we got it we talked about this already so all this that you're presenting to me is null and void it does not phase me because i've already um, been secure i've already been in relationship me and god talk and so when we are not anchored in that way, we're going to fall for it. Because the minute some uh, super exciting ministry opportunity or super uh, uh, um, kind of grand thing that puts us on display, we're going to fall for it. Oh, okay, well, that's God. That's a God thing, right? So let me take it. And that kind of um, points to something else I had written, to not conflate effectiveness with faithfulness. Because sometimes when we see numbers or we see somebody succeed in ministry, we automatically assume that this is God. But the only way to know this is God is to, like the, the word God says, look at the fruit, look at the anchor, look at the foundation. Where is it coming from? Why am I doing this? And I'm not talking about just looking at other people. I'm talking about looking at ourselves. Like, why am I truly doing this? Like, I can go out and minister and it'd be highly effective. But can I come home and say, I truly did this for the right reason? Or did I truly do this for God or for my own sense of validation? Why was it that I went that I went out and had this idea and, and executed it? What, what was my mission? What was my mission? <laughs> what was my motivation for that? And so even if it's effective, it may not, it still may not be um, kind of affirming in the eyes of God because I didn't do it for the right reasons or I didn't do it from the right source, if that makes sense. So I'm glad you said that point about, you know, Satan trying to provide something that the father had already, or he made Jesus feel like the father hadn't already provided those things for him. Anyone else? We yeah, we, we, Go ahead, Pastor. Okay, the, the wilderness was also a place of preparation uh, you will know that the temptation did not come until after the preparation. I like that text. I believe it's 1 Corinthians where uh, Paul writes through the anointing of the Holy Spirit that uh, there is no temptation that has come upon us, but it's come unto man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you can bear, but will with the temptation make a way of escape so that you can bear it. Uh, and so the preparation time, as you all have said, uh, Yeshua knew he was going to be going out here in a place where he would have to deal with uh, ups and downs. He would have to deal with contrary spirits. And so even though he had been affirmed by God and edified by God, he still had some preparation to do because we have this treasure in earthen vessels. God is not just choosing us to be robots. There is a role that we must play and we cannot play that role if we are not prepared. If we, if we have not gone through the wilderness experience, you know, the military don't send anybody out there until they send them to boot camp. Matter of fact, I was listening to the news today and they have uh, the NATO and, and the Western Alliance that are preparing in, in, in Europe just in case Putin does something stupid on the other side with the NATO countries. And they were going through their drills and stuff like that. We have to be prepared. And the, the, the problem is sometimes on mission, we know that God is with us, but we ourselves are not prepared for God to use us. And then the enemy comes and we 
uh, feel like God let us down. But no, there is a self-preparation that we must do. Uh, so after the edification, Jesus had to go in that wilderness and go through that 40 days of preparation. That's why he was able to say after the preparation, it is written. And when we are going to go on mission, God has called us. He hasn't called angels. He hasn't called the heavenly beings. He called human flesh. And so we have a preparation that we have to do. We are working with God. Uh, I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, that says, uh, uh, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We, we have to be prepared. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Pastor, for uh, that reminder. And something I often say um, is, or a prayer that I often pray is, God, to not take me to a place that my character cannot sustain. Um, and sometimes that's going to be disappointing. That me that's going to mean God saying no to certain prayers that I pray because I don't know sometimes that my character is not prepared for it. And in the culture that we live in, in the celebrity culture, not the celebrity culture, but celebrity Christian culture, it's, it's that fast track to biggest ministry, biggest this, but sometimes our characters are not prepared for what we want or what we think we need or what we think our, our um what our vision is for ourselves for our church and that that this that and the third our character is not prepared for it so if we not we don't allow god to do the work while we are with him um anything that happens in mission either backfires or um it doesn't happen at all because our character wasn't prepared for it so uh, in closing I would just kind of like to leave you guys with these nuggets that we talked about tonight, um, that God's affirmation, this is my beloved son or daughter, if you're a woman, in whom I am more pleased, um, reminding ourselves of spending time with God, treating our relationship with God like an actual relationship, learning who we are in Christ so that our mission doesn't become about performance, about assessing our worth, and learning to be prepared, as Pastor said, learning to sit in that season of preparation in that wilderness period so that we can be prepared for mission um, so that we know what it looks like to look like Christ because we cannot preach to others what it looks like to look like Christ if we don't know what it looks like to look like Christ. And so I pray that you guys were edified, were blessed, and that more, most importantly, that this give, give you some nuggets to reflect on, not just for yourself, but as a church, what we de we desire to do as a church this year and going forward, that we remember what our root is, what our foundation is. And so that let that sustain us through the highs and the lows that we are going to experience as a church this year and beyond. That God affirms us. God is our rock. God, God is our source of strength. He is our redeemer. He is everything that we need for the season that we're going to need it in the time and in the way that we're going to need it. And so as we go about this year, I pray as, as Berean, that we truly do impact our community, but that it comes from a place of truly being with God uh, before we be, are sent on mission. Pastor, it's all you. Amen, amen. Thank you, Elder Manuska. Thank you so much for leading us through this hour. My friends, you, uh, you, you, if you've been blessed by this ministry, uh, this is the time that we ask you to join us and uh, partner with us to support this ministry. One of the things that we do at Our, our Power is bring a variety of uh, ministry uh, formats so that we are not redundant. So some months we just pray. Others, we, we study the word as we did today. Uh, and uh, we want to thank Elder Manuska for that. Um, here I am again asking you to partner with us. Uh, and there are four ways that you can do that. Uh, you see on your screen tonight, you can give through our cash app, dollar sign Berean 4555 with the B being uppercase letter. Or you can give by way of our website, bereanbatonrouge.com, bereanbatonrouge.com. Click on online giving. 
and then follow the prompts uh, to give your gifts. Or you can write us a check to the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, uh, 4555 Fairfields Avenue, 70802 is our zip code. Or this Sabbath, you can come to our campus at 11 o'clock a.m. We're having service here, and you can bring your offerings with you, your tithe, 10% of uh, what God has blessed you and increased you with, uh, a special offering as you value God's worth to you. We also are asking you to support us in our special project. We're trying to raise 150000 to improve our equipments and our evangelism uh, so that you don't have these little glitches and, and so forth. And so we thank you for uh, sharing with us tonight and for being a partner with us in supporting this ministry financially. I'm gonna pray right now uh, that Yahweh will bless you in a very special way. Yahweh, I pray for that man, that woman, that boy and that girl who has made up their mind that tonight they're gonna to give to the Berean ministry. They're gonna give financially so that we may be able to do ministry efficiently and effectively. Bless them. Receive these offerings, these gifts. May they go to the furthering of the work of the gospel in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Well, my friends, uh, just a few announcements before we let you go. Uh, we want you to uh, look forward to sharing with us this Sabbath at 11 a.m. Central Time. Uh, we are uh, doing a series of messages dealing with the ministry of our Lord and Savior Yeshua when he was on this earth uh, last Sabbath. Our message was entitled, It's a Love Thing. And we came out of uh, John chapter 3, verse 17, and Romans chapter 5, verse 8. This Sabbath, we're coming from uh, Mark chapter 9, verses 14 through 19, and verses 23 and 24. Uh, and uh, also, uh, was a collateral passage there, will be, I believe, um, Romans chapter five, verse eight as well. But, 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 but read Mark chapter nine, uh, up to verse 24. That's where we're going to be coming from. You don't want to miss it. Yahweh has deposited a word in my spirit. I can't wait for Sabbath morning to share it. It, it, it is going to bless you, uh, and, and I just want you to look forward to it because I'm looking forward to it. Also, the 19th, which is next Sabbath, not this Sabbath, but next Sabbath, our youth and young adult are going to be leading out. They lead out every third Sabbath, and they are doing a community baby shower. Wow community baby shower on Sabbath. Uh, we're changing the way we do church here. And uh, we're going to be uh, gifting gifts to the community, eight years old and under. And so we're asking you to bring gifts uh, because we, we send word out in the community. Our community people are gonna come out and we're gonna give them pampers. We're gonna give all kinds of stuff that eight-year-olds and seven and six and five and babies uh, need to use because some of them have never experienced a baby shower for their kid. And we want to be their conduit. So we want you to join us. Also on Monday, Every Monday morning at seven o'clock, Elder Manuska, our prayer uh, uh, ministry leader, started what is called Monday Manna. Monday Manna, where she's doing a Bible study and prayer. Just nine to 10 minutes. It's not going to be too long. We want you to join us on Facebook and YouTube for Monday Manna. And you're going to have some manna. You know what the manna is, that bread that God rained from heaven when the children of Israel were going through the wilderness. It's going to bless you. Let me tell you, you can go back to Facebook 
and check out last Monday manor. It was awesome. We're looking forward to doing a powerful ministry and experience this year with you being partnered with us. God bless you. Elder Manuska, can you close us with our benediction? Let us pray. The Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the gift of fellowship. We thank you for your word. But most importantly, we thank you for your presence. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a good night. And we'll see you on Sabbath morning.